Welcome to the presentation of Acu Work Order, an Acuboost product published by Information Integration Group. I'm Alec Bag, the Chilean Chief Solution Architect for Information Integration Group. Seven products published uh, by Information Integration Group are uh, certified by, Inform uh, by Acumatica and are included in the Acumatica price list. Uh, you, you see the list to the left there and a couple other products that are very popular uh, Acuboost uh, products published by Information Integration Group. Uh, to, today's uh, recording is going to concentrate on some advanced functionality uh, in AccuWork Order. AccuWork Order is an overview recording of it available on our website as well. I urge you to view that recording um, since it goes over the kits and routings before you, so we, before you view this recording. So what I'm going to show today is Phantom Bills. The basically uh, Phantom Bills uh, gives you the ability uh, to have uh, a kit that as part of its component has a kit and for these situations you can um, by setting decide to load the components of that kit uh, into the work order or load the, uh, that component, that kit itself as a stocked item into the manufacturing transaction. We add some process manufacturing features, the ability to enter a component as a percentage of the batch size will create multiple finished goods for a work order. Give you the ability to handle your outside processing needs. We will generate the purchase order to the vendor. We'll generate the transfer sales order to move the product to an outside processing warehouse. The overhead allocation, which you def define overhead allocation codes and allocate cost to manufacturing uh, transaction. QC notes give you the ability on ungenerated work orders uh, as, as you work on the manufacturing transactions to enter QC notes and, and uh, set, set up QC notes that require approval, attach documents to them and then view the notes uh, later on. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to first show you uh, the ability uh, to uh, generate uh, work orders that for kits that include a component as part of the kit. So if I click on pound sign, plus sign here, uh, I'll have the ability to enter an item. Uh, and this is a desk. And uh, for this desk, I basically have a component uh, that itself uh, is, is, uh, is, is a kit. Uh, so I basically with this enhancement system gives me the ability to process work orders where I load uh, the components of that drawer into the work orders or uh, load the drawer itself as a component of the manufacturing. So if I click on generate a manufacturing dispatch and entering the question, uh, it would ask me a question. And this question basically is asking me whether I want to load the components uh, into the, uh, of that uh, kit into the work order. So I can basically he, here see the three transactions that got created uh, that basically is created based on the routing that is linked to this item, desktop 2500. Uh, so for the three transactions generated, as I click on it, it would bring uh, up that manufacturing transaction. And I would see that the side and the bottom uh, uh, panels are loaded here uh, as uh, basically component themselves. And in our system using group codes, and routing steps, you can def uh, basically set this up that, uh, that all of these components get loaded into a separate step in the manufacturing process and so forth. If I go back to my work order and I, I create another work order transaction, and this time basically I would choose uh, not to load the components, uh, you would see that the system would uh, just uh, load the drawer itself as a component into the generated work order. So if I come here into this work order, uh, I would see that no longer the components of this drawer are loaded, uh, but uh, the actual uh, drawer itself is loaded as a component. And the system would do this for multiple levels deep. So you can have situations where you have uh, kits that are two levels, three levels uh, deep into the kit, and you could uh, decide whether you want to load those components into the work order or you want to generate the work order uh, for, for, the, 
for the generator. So the rest of it is, is the same, uh, you know, in our uh, processes, we give you the ability to, uh, as you remove the transaction from hold, we give you the ability to allocate component. Basically, when you click on allocate component, we create an, uh, a demand for the components of this kit. So in, in, on our automatic inventory availability screens, we show uh, the demand uh, for these components and we show the uh, supply for the finished good. And if you can uh, click on the uh, release, basically we move the products from their main location to a different location in, into the system. Next thing I wanna show you is the ability to generate multiple finished goods. And for this, I am going to go back to the work order processing and uh, create a work order, uh, in this case for, for an uh, item that is set up as a purple paint. So uh, purple paint, we're manufacturing purple paint. If I take us to the uh, program for it, you would see that in the kit specification program for the purple paint, we have given it some uh, green paint, orange paint, and white paint that we get mixed to create a paint. And here are uh, the different finished goods that we'll be producing. This components would get filled into one liter, two liter, and five liter cans. And notice that each one of these items, the one liter, two liter, five liter, itself is a kit specification document transaction where you have the lead and the can and the label entered uh, for, for it. So if I bring up that one liter can, you would see that it has the, the lead, it has the cap, it has the non-stock, if it has any non-stock. And notice that the finished goods, the one liter, two liter, they have their own rotting, and this would be for the functions of uh, that, that are specific to the one liter, two liter cans, putting the label on them, putting the cap on them, packaging them. And the main uh, kit specification, mixed paint has its own rotting. And if I take us quickly to the rotting, you would see those rottings that the mixed paint basically uh, is you, it has one step and that's for mixing the paints. And uh, the one, uh, the other one paint my can manufacturing is has the steps that are for filling and, and so forth and so on. So now if I come back to here and generate a work order, save this and that's for my purple paint. And I click on generate dispatch. It would tell me that, okay, I want to generate 40, uh, 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 liters of this and I'm going to put this 20 in the one liter and five in the two liter and five in the two liter, uh, two, li two in five liters, which uh, would sum up and come to my 40. And what the system is going to do based on the rottings defined for my finished good, it would create the transaction. So the first manufacturing transaction, I will have the three paints that would get issued. And as I put this through its, its steps, uh, uh, it would basically consume uh, the green and white and orange paint as I go take it to its release and allocate components. And then as I come to the steps that are specific to paint can, it would allocate from the ingredient. So uh, what we do as part of this feature, we add to the stock item program of Acumatica the ability to define which items are uh, uh, ingredients. And the ingredients are what gets allocated uh, to, uh, to to different finished goods. And of course, this is set up all in the work order preferences. You indicate the uh, the type uh, that would be it would use to allocate to other types and the types of items like label and can and lead that are specific and then they just are useless. So basically, this gives you the ability uh, as you go through these different uh, steps to uh, uh, create the Two, uh, um, two liter paints and five liter paints. And what we do in this scenario, we not only create the steps that uh, mix the, the three uh, uh, colors uh, to come um, in, in a batch, but then we create also these batch transactions that let you consume how much of that, it let you specify how much of those uh, a batch of ingredients you use for the different uh, size of cans that uh, you'll be using, of course, you can make changes to it. So, uh, uh, of course, in the kit specification program for the purple paint, that's where you can enter uh, percentages, uh, uh, quantities, percentages, 
and for that uh, the system gives you the ability to enter instead of the uh, quantities you enter percentages and that's component by percentage check boxes here and these numbers become percentages and you would allocate those uh, based on the factors defined here conversion factors are defined and the percentages are defined here that's how it knows how to allocate the ingredients to each uh, item generated next thing i want to show us is the how to process um, outside processing work orders and for this i am going to enter a work order uh, for a, a serum that we we're manufacturing that part of the work is done in an outside processing uh, location so if i look at the kit specification for that serum let's bring that up uh, and select the revision for it you would see that uh, one of these has a group code of outside processing the uh, routing for it is serum uh, production outside processing and if i take us to the serum for outside processing outside by this other one you would see that one of the steps is flagged as outside processing and the vendor number is entered here so what happens is a, a warehouse is set up in the outside processing as the outside processing warehouse in the uh, work order preferences and what happens when i create the manufacturing transaction inventory is moved to that uh, warehouse uh, which uh, by the way okay, you can be set up at the preferences and you can have different ones uh, created by uh, by uh, by vendors. So if you have different vendors that you want to set up as you could do that. So we're going to go back to the uh, work order and I'm going to enter a work order for uh, this uh, product that we're going to manufacture this serum and if I save it and as soon as I click generate dispatch system because it uh, sees the outside processing step and, and, and a vendor it would go ahead and uh, create a purchase order and a transfer sales order uh, for me. So let's go ahead and look at that. So here I have uh, the manufacturing transactions that are being created just like other orders. But what I've also done for the quantity that I have here, if I go to my sales orders, I have created a transfer sales order in the system. And that transfer sales order uh, is being created to move my inventory uh, to an outside processing warehouse that is, is, is set up by that vendor. So if I bring up that vendor, you'll see that outside processing and the inventory as I process it in the system, as I create the shipment, uh, I would be basically allowing the, the folks in the, in the warehouse uh, ship this product to that vendor uh, using the, you know, Acumatica's order shipping pack, pack process. Now, uh, update IN is the one that actually moves in into to the other location. So, you know, your no, uh, product is no longer in your main warehouse. Along with this um, uh, gener sales order, when we created the uh, work order transaction, we also created a purchase order. And what we have on that purchase order is a, is basically uh, a line item and this line item uh, uh, the, is for a non-stock item and this is to basically handle the expense uh, for the uh, for the outside process so if i come back to my kit specifications to show this information i can show that in the kit specification for that item which is my outside process I, as part of the grouping that is the outside process, I have a component entered grouped with an outside process. And this is the labor code that is used uh, basically uh, to, uh, to create the purchase order. And as part of my routing, if I bring up the routing again, very quickly, uh, we would see that uh, we've told it that that is a step that is an outside processing. And that's the vendor. Of course, I can change the vendor at the work order level. But here is my the fact that this is an outside processing. This is the vendor that product needs to get shipped to. 
as I mentioned, by this vendor or by work order preferences, I set up a warehouse that inventory gets transferred to and on and on. So I have a purchase order, uh, which basically I can have a cost uh, for it if, if I want to, pending approval, I guess I could approve this. And uh, once approved, I can generate the PO receipt. Uh, and the nice thing about this process is uh, that we basically, any once you enter the PO receipt and update this, any cost you entered here, we bring that cost back into, uh, we bring that cost back into the system uh, as our cost for the, uh, uh, for that product and include that cost as part of the, as part of the cost for the, uh, you know, manufacturing the process. So that cost gets rolled up as, as part of the ma manufacturing step. So outside processing very easily, what we've done is the, to give you the ability to define steps that need to be done by the outside vendors. We generate the transfer sales order to ship the product out. We uh, generate the purchase order for uh, the cost that you'll be incurring. And we also generate an inventory transfer document uh, that is sitting in the system. So when you're done, uh, you could basically receive that product, that quantity of 10 back into the stock from the outside processing to your main warehouse and it tells you for what item it is and so forth and so on that uh, got generated. So that's outside processing, uh, very easily handled uh, in, in, in our uh, enhancement. As part of our routing, now I'm gonna show you the ability to handle overhead and overhead codes are added to the system and by ma manufacturing uh, routing steps, you basically can enter overhead steps and and the overhead charges one or two, you can have up to three overhead charges entered, uh, whether it's event or utilities, you enter it for the step and you could save that. And basically what happens is that uh, in the system, you have the overhead uh, cost codes, overhead allocation code, and you enter by each overhead allocation, whether it's a fixed amount or whether it's a by hours or, you know, so you enter this, uh, expenses staff and you could tell it whether it's a by hours by costs or and so so it uses this information to know what what it should allocate and as you generate your work orders for the generated work orders uh, it gives you the ability to it gives you the ability to recalculate the cost uh, of that is it, part of this or um, so it gives you the it basically would calculate your overhead cost but it would also give you the ability to uh, on a manufacturing transaction to recalculate the loaded so the overhead uh, overheads uh, would get loaded as a non-stock item here rent and uh, rent and utilities would get loaded based on the setting here and at all times, you have the ability to recalculate overhead charges. You can set it up so it, when they, it creates a kit assembly transaction, it even recalculates your overhead charges again uh, for you. So very easy uh, way of entering uh, uh, information to the system and calculating your overhead costs for you. Uh, next thing I want to show you is the uh, QC notes entry. So we give you the ability to enter QC codes, and you can have all kinds of QC codes entered, who entered the uh, notes, and and one what day, and you can enter a co comment here, system will not cool down uh, to allow for, allow for next step, and you could type enough, by QC code that are created in the system, you have the ability to set up so it requires an approval. And you can, of course, have set up so the only certain people have the access to this field to do the approval. Uh, similar to QC codes, we have problems code and resolution code. So you can easily enter what was the problem, how was, uh, you know, whether it's training or what resolved the issue. So uh, information entered, all the QC notes entered, then are available in this program where you could come to and enter a field filter just to see all the uh, issues that have been reported that are cooling related, 
for a specific date range, what operator recorded what uh, entry specific item or a revision of an item, and see all the notes and attachments that are stored uh, for, for that uh, Q, uh, QC uh, code in the system. So this is a quick overview of some of our enhancements. Please view the overview of the active work order first before uh, viewing this enhancement uh, recording. Uh, thank you for your time and uh, looking forward to hearing from you uh, if we can be of any assistance uh, with any of your uh, needs.